Toss a coin to your showrunner because season one knocked it out of the park. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things The Witcher show did better than the games. For this list, we're looking at the characters, moments, and narrative threads that Netflix's adaptation of Andrei Sapkowski's Witcher series handled better than CD Projekt Red's video games. Don't think we're saying one completely overshadows the other, both are phenomenal. It's just that like Henry Cavill's bath scene, some things are better in live action. When extreme measures seem reasonable, yes, I'm desperate. Number 10. Magic So far, we've only seen a few of Geralt's signs, including Ard, Axie, and Erden. But the show still did a great job of exploring the roots and rules of magic in the world. In an intimate moment with Yennefer, Istrid discusses how the elves taught magic to the first humans. Elves are the original sorcerers of the continent. You see, when humans and monsters all arrived after the conjunction of the spheres, Elven mages taught the first humans how to turn chaos into magic. Then there are the lessons in Eratuza, in which Tissaia teaches the wannabe sorcerers the nature of chaos and the price of using it. This is the balance. Demonstrated beautifully. Thank you, Frangilla. There is no conjuring something from nothing. There is a give and a take. The series doesn't skimp on the visual splendor either, from Yen's harrowing transformation to the time she unleashed hell on the Nilfgaardian army. Hey everyone, I just want to take a moment to talk to you guys about the game that everyone on the internet is talking about, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is an immersive RPG that features everything you could want from a dark fantasy game. Raid's got crisp, high-end graphics and over 400 champions to collect and customize. And now, Raid's all-new Battle Pass is ready, and you can win awesome rewards by doing daily and weekly challenges. Raid is totally free on mobile and PC, so what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special links, and if you're a new player, you'll get 100,000 silver, 50 gems, one free energy refill, and one free champion, the Adjudicator, who is a badass high elf that really helps you get started in Raid. All these treasures will be waiting for you right here. Good luck, and I'll see you there. Number 9. Geralt and Yennefer's Relationship Thank you for coming, Geralt. I'd have had a much harder time of it on my own. Well, I never could say no to you. The Witcher 3 did an excellent job of reintroducing Yen into the world and making players feel like she and Geralt had history and passion between them, like two old flames who found their love rekindled. However, in the show's case, said passions are new, raw, and unpredictable. We see the White Wolf and the Obsidian Star lose themselves to lust, struggle to admit their personal feelings, even suffer one of the most visceral breakups we've seen in a fantasy series. Disregard for others' freedom has become quite your trademark. I made that wish to save your life. I didn't need your help! Needless to say, watching them stumble and grow arguably makes for a far more interesting watch. Number 8. Nilfgaard's Invasion Yes, the Nilfgaardian armor does indeed look ridiculous and far more veiny than we would have liked. But that being said, the show really managed to amp up Nilfgaard's threat level. The infamous Empire was well on their way towards victory in Wild Hunt, which was set during the Third Northern War. Here, they're an empire newly on the warpath, fueled by a radical loyalty to the White Flame and committing atrocities that we see up close and personal. Even if later seasons may eventually temper them, the bloodlust they showed throughout the first season is not something we're likely to forget. Number 7. The Law of Surprise Ciri and Geralt's relationship is the crux of the Witcher's epic storyline, but how was their bond forged in the first place? That would be the Law of Surprise, something often raised in the games but seldom discussed in detail. The show dedicates an entire episode to the matter, when Dooney reveals the deal he struck with Pavetta's father. By tradition, I chose the Law of Surprise as payment. Whatever windfall he came home to find, would be mine. Adapted from Andrei Sapkowski's short story, A Question of Price, the episode explains the nature of the custom and emphasizes the role that destiny plays in both the Law of Surprise and the world in general. We see it in action again, of course, when Geralt invokes the law and is eventually but inevitably united with Ciri. Number 6. The Striga
One of the more iconic monsters that Geralt has slain, the Striga was given a compelling redesign for the show. While the Kikimora is also worthy of a mention, the Striga truly became a creature of horror. Not only was the build-up to its reveal masterfully done, but its appearance more than lived up to its twisted origins. Skeletal, screaming like a banshee, and strong enough to toss the Witcher around like a bag of flour. Here's hoping the necrophages, ogroids, relics, specters, and the rest of the bestiary get this kind of treatment. Number 5. Side Characters Credit has to be given to the games for bringing Geralt's inner circle to life in such a convincing manner. The same is true of his seemingly never-ending stream of villains. However, that being said, the majority of the lesser NPCs, while brought to life with great voice performances, didn't feel like well-rounded characters. In contrast, in the show, side characters like Tissaia, Calanthe, and Renfri all had deeply rooted motivations and inner conflicts that made them just as interesting as members of the main cast. I could have become so many things. Queen Calanthe of Sintra, she just won her first battle at Hoshbaz. But here I am trying to convince you I'm not. A monster. Every second they were on screen, we were completely invested in their personalities and fates. Number 4. Yennefer's Backstory if anyone gave Geralt a run for his money in terms of dominating the screen, it was the sorceress who spent her youth unloved and unwanted. How much for this beast? Six. Four. What are you doing? So. However, from the moment she's sold by her scumbag father for less than a pig, her journey becomes fraught with both desperation and danger. <laughs> Her initial fixation on power later takes a back seat to her obsession with regaining her maternal potential. What are you really doing here? I'm here for the dragon. There are certain healing properties it's rumored to possess. In the same season, she also matures into an unexpected beacon of hope for the Northern Kingdoms. Her video game counterpart was awesome in a multitude of ways, but not even her god-tier snark can match the emotional apex that was Anya Chalotra's Yen. Number 3. Fringilla's Ruthlessness Stop us if you've heard this one before. Geralt encounters a beautiful sorceress with whom he has a romantic history, or soon will have. In the games, Fringilla is another one of Geralt's former sorceress lovers and a prisoner of Emperor Emir Var Emrys. You look good. For a captive of Emir, is that what you mean? Players have the option to save her in Wild Hunt, but it's hard to imagine that any such mercy will be shown to her in the Netflix adaptation. We know what it's like to have corrupt leaders, but under our new leader, Emperor Mir, we've changed. We've strengthened trade. We've funded research. We have torn down walls. This is a Fringella whom Yennefer humiliated and who's now ruthlessly loyal to Nilfgaard. In fact, she's willing not only to try killing her old Rectoress and classmates, but also to dabble in forbidden magic. You know you're going down a dark path when you're turning your underlings into magical ammo. Number 2. Series Origins Welcome, child of the Elder Blood. We knew you would return. Your taste lingers on our tongues. Fans of the game series know the Swallow is a capable swordswoman who slices her way through the crones of Crookback Bog and unleashes the power of the Elder Blood. This is not that series. Rather, the show introduces a much younger version, just as her life crumbles following the fall of Sintra. In the game, we only see young Ciri in a brief flashback, during her training. While that is pretty cool, seeing this new version of Ciri go from sheltered princess to able survivor with a looming destiny is far more entertaining. And who knows, maybe one day we will see her swing a sword. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Yaskier's Songs Toss a coin to your witcher, O Valley of Plenty, O Valley of Plenty, oh. Move over, Dandelion. There's a new bard in town, and he is spitting fire with those ballads of his. You're pulling my leg. Not this time. While it's up for debate whether Joey Beatty's portrayal has well and truly eclipsed that of the game's version, what cannot be denied is that his music is in a league of its own. Don't get us 
what's wrong. We love Dandelion in the games, but some of his songs are decidedly lacking. My oh my, what a sight. Why no melancholy? Must be that, still not wed. That is why so jolly. Not only was Toss a Coin to Your Witcher so good it entranced most of the continent, but it's fair to say it's found its way onto plenty of music libraries upon release. Toss a coin to the Witcher, oh valley of plenty, oh valley of plenty, oh. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.